podcast originally. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming out in there, inserting um, the new panel. Sumbrella. Sumbrella. And then there's a couple other changes to that sign as well. Yes, I have revised drawings. I can use my uh, yeah. There's a revised set of drawings that I can pass up. Yeah, so that would be like change taking place. It's to the, like the stack sign on the building. There's an additional panel that they want to change. Thank you. Again, they're all the same size. Oh, good. So, we went to page two A one. Yeah. So that's the. You compare wall. that with the other one. The wall pool outdoors is the. Beanstalk. Or beanstalk. Was a beanstalk? That's the one that's changing. Uh, yeah. Matthew Bushnett from Jordan's Furniture. Uh, we have a few tenants that will be moving out uh, towards the end of the year. The trapeze has moved out already, and Bose is scheduled to move out the end of the year. So we're redoing that sign specifically to um, change out for the trapeze leaving. We have what we're calling Bean Star, which is a source coming in. Uh, so we wanted to place that on the sign now with the sponsorship change the umbrella, so we wanted to show that now and when we do that there'll be some reconfiguring of that flex face to clean it up and reorganize things so that they're more stacked on top of each other and we'll eventually probably be coming back in once bows is removed from the pylon sign that you see there now um, we don't have any plans for the panel as of yet Sure what we'll do with that if another tenant comes in or if we'll come back to put bean stock down there or what. Bose is gone? Not yet, but yeah, towards the end, the end of the year, I think uh, the end of December or January is their plan to move out. So drawing 2A1 represents the latest and greatest of all changes that's going to take place. And the umbrella letters, in each and every case, is the same size or less than the previous uh, Templepedic sign in the same locations. And uh, unfortunately, this, this will be an ongoing <laughs> event. Yeah, I kind of put a comment in the draft decision um, so that we can, it, so long as it, you know, is within the existing um, sure. field or parameters, you know, that, you know, we have to just make sure it meets our lighting requirements and, you know, I think that would be a more efficient way. But since there were so, so many different changes other than just one panel, I, I did want to bring it before the board and sort of mm -hmm. clarify the, um, the idea moving forward. On 4A1, I'm, I'm assuming it's just how it's being presented here, but it does seem awfully close to the top edge of the building. Yeah, actually, that, that will come down further. It, we, we would like that to be closer to the IMAX. The way it's represented, it is high. And uh, that is not our plan, actually. Elliot mentioned that, that he, he wanted the uh, on all the signs, this umbrella closer to the IMAX. Yeah. So that was pointed out. Well, so I'm sorry, what was your name? My name is Matthew Bushnack. Okay. same on 3A1 as well on the front of the building. That would probably be dropped down a little closer to the IMAX as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. so 
the actual placement of the vehicle was okay. Same we'll size. Yeah, it will affect the size of the letters. Placement will be a little closer. Would you be able to um, provide the exact revised drawings? Just the building inspector, he'll want to issue a permit for the actual location so that when he looks at it, he doesn't say, well, that's not the exact location. Yeah, no, yeah. sure thing. I'm not sure we can dimensionalize it, but I think we can actually, we can definitely get new renderings that show it closer. We can yeah. come pretty close because we got the original Tempur-Pedic yep. drawing that shows the rectangle and we can revise it to show those same dimensions. Yeah. Signs shall be illuminated between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. except for signs for business open during those hours. 495 Okay. So you'll have to uh, accommodate that. Sure. It sounds like that may not be the case right now. I don't know if I have any personal recollection of that. I do know the sign does go off late at night because I drive home that way, but the exact time, I, you may know more of around the exact time. I just know that sometimes there are late night meetings. Chris, what, uh, they go past 11, so. Chris, what I'm concerned about is that the sign might not be wired to do that. I, I can address that if you like. Being the property manager, very familiar with the property. Uh, the pylon sign, if we're addressing the pylon sign, is for the clock itself. Uh, it has control of time clock. Jordan's has a time clock for our operation and um, the other two parties that are there, the Staples side of it, as well as Home Depot, have time clocks for theirs. Uh, I monitor the Jordan's um, and I can certainly check that time clock to make sure that it's operating within those hours. As far as the building goes, all of the building signage and lighting is controlled by an energy management system, which I monitor as well. And we can certainly, I think for the most part, we set our times to stay within the standards of times. And we can look at that and make sure that that's how it goes. Okay. It sounds like <coughs> the staple side and Home Depot manage that on their own. That. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, but a court right that, that says any time after 11 when the store is not open correct the, if the store is open the the only us. the only store that should that would be open in there Chili's. or the imax or the yeah. imax yeah. Yeah. yeah macaroni grill maybe there's a few yeah yeah then late in reading <laughs> no, I can see them. Open. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, that's out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the extent of my out. Yes. Good catch, Tony. 
Okay, yeah, so that'd be great if you could look into that. Thank you. And do we want to send something to Home Depot and I guess, I don't know, whoever own, operates the staple side, just asking them to well, confirm? The, in, in this particular one, yeah. this is just a COA, okay. Mm -hmm. So we don't have the opportunity for... <laughs> We can follow up on that. Yeah, that'd be great. Is there reason to believe that that may not be um, happening? I believe it's not happening on the outside of the building facing the highway. I think that's on later at night. Add, add the note to the COA, I guess. Um, just to be in compliance with section 49563D. Right. And then does anyone on the board have a concern with the comment for future sign changes? No, I think we should be in there. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yep. Save you guys some time. Yeah. have to get a sponsor for 20 years of making money. Absolutely. Good. Any other uh, <coughs> questions, concerns, comments? Move that CPDC uh, approve the certificate of appropriateness for the signage change at uh, 50 Walker's Brook Drive as amended. Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Thank you very much. on our agenda, endorsement of subdivision plan and approval of Covenant 92 Sanborn Lane, the new Mariano Drive. Are we so should he be stamping anything with those? Or uh, yes, please. Sorry. That's right. I was actually well, getting a little a ahead of myself. Of so happy we're moving along. All four of these pages? Yeah. yeah, and you might want to, um, I do all four and then note the, um, oh, yeah. note that wherever they said they would change.
the leg. <laughs> Good. So I think, is this kind of our final step for you to move forward? It's a step. Yeah. It's a step, yeah. Meaning for this board, I... So we have we have the plans um, that will be endorsed, and these are the plans that actually get recorded. Also, that gets recorded is the covenant mm -hmm. that sort of binds him to doing post improvements. So we have that here for you guys to sign as well. Oh, That's a for you guys. And <coughs> George is taking a look at it, as well as the um, easement document that he'll record. You guys don't have to sign anything on the easement document, but it does get recorded with the plan. That's for the slope and site easements. Okay. Um, George does have a memo in your packet. So you could look everything over. Um, so this is, yeah, this is the next step. And then what he would do is he would start working on the road. Yeah. And establish his bond. And then get the lots released to start building. Sounds good. Do we have a notary here? Um, we can actually have that done. Okay. Yeah, later. So. Any concerns or anything? We can sell them, do we? No. Prove anything, or is this just like a signing ceremony? <laughs> <coughs> well, that is the approval. Okay, well, I wasn't sure if we had to vote on anything. Let me rephrase that. Should we go over here? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple. Yeah, yeah, it's been voted, it's been approved. Do the requirements to endorse the plan are the covenant and the um, proof of ownership and the easement so we have we have everything in need we have to fill out all these dates as well yes i wrote down the dates for you We were just talking about Yeah, that. we're going to be, about, Jesse about? and I are going to be speaking <laughs> at a conference. I don't have any tax title land. Build some affordable homes. <laughs> what about just basic, like, starter ranches? Well, <coughs> Enlighten me. How about little six family it's apartments? It's acquisition cost. The land is too expensive? You that? know, I'm paying for these. Yeah, I'm paying for a, a tear down in a nice neighborhood, a decent location in Rem. I'm paying $360,000 to tear it down. So I can't build a $400,000 house on it. What about saying I need to create it to be there? I put a bid originally, and I just got some documentation to rebid. They want to rebid. They took a bid that wasn't. Uh, work out for them. Surprise. I, I told them, you know, I, I'm too far down the road with this and some other things, so I don't think I'm going to get involved in it. Uh, I think they put it out for a bit again, and they're, they're closing in in another couple of weeks, so 
you'll probably be seeing some of soon. What about multifamily housing? I would love to. I would love to. That's, um, I'm working on something that will soon be some apartment building. The downtown smart growth district? No. Is it near the train? No. Oh, you mean a 40B? Yeah. Has to come through the CPDC. Acquisition costs the biggie. Yeah. How much? How much is land going for now? What's that? Well, uh, you know, building a house on Scout Hill, right? Yeah. Like, 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 on the same location, the same foundation. So that's about twenty four hundred square feet. But I paid three hundred sixty thousand dollars for it. I took the cost to it down and rebuilt it. It's essentially a new house. Or money he makes it back. I put that on the other day for seven fifty. Yeah. So you make a couple hundred thousand. And then we've got the second set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ask a question. Sure. How much do you put down on a nine hundred fifty thousand dollar house? Well, a lot of people put that as their second. No, that's a no question. We are going to a conference. I mean, we're trying uh, to come up with a barrier. A, a lot of, Not that I would ever be in a position to do it, but I'm just curious. Well, the people yeah, who are two hundred thousand. That used to be the way. It's their second or third house. Okay. So they're filled up by a chunk of equity. Okay. It's it's in the neighborhood of two hundred thousand. It's mostly from proceeds from equity from the sale of okay. the and then they'll put that as the deposit. Okay. But yeah, you know, for a four thousand or forty-five hundred dollar mortgage payment, I'm just scared to you. It scares me, and I'm not even buying. Forty-five hundred dollar mortgage payment, not even including taxes. Yeah, I mean the first the first property I bought was back in nineteen seventy. We got a thirty eight acre farm in New Hampshire for twenty one two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the I know. first building lot I bought in nineteen eighty four it was seven thousand dollars. The building lot I sold the house on it for forty nine nine and I thought it was Donald Trump. I think I made like four hundred thousand right. dollars or something. <laughs> 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 I'll just prove that you two are old guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, October of 1983. And if you remember what happened in 83, Jimmy Carr, the gas lines. Mm -hmm. I paid, I got a construction loan at the bank. I paid three above prime. Prime at the bank was 16 and three quarters. Uh, right. I paid 19 and three quarters percent for a construction loan. Yeah. Well, well, I bought the house here in Reading in, in the middle of 83. And the first mortgage was like 12 and three quarters. Wow. 
Look at Ohio Real Estate. They want four and an eighth percent interest. <laughs> for your savings. Yes, back then telephones had dials. <laughs> Is where do you go? Well, heavy on the sweat. Yeah. Keep going. I think we can side and listen. Sure. Um, do we want to do so. town meeting first, or do you want to do planning updates first? Let's do planning updates. All right. And then dive into town then we meeting. Can, yeah. <laughs> dive. <laughs> um. So planning updates. The um, I, I don't know if I mentioned last time. The building permit was issued for Perfectos Whoa. last week. Mm. Amazing. So <laughs> that was a big, big milestone, major milestone. So we are officially done, and all I need to do is build it now. <laughs> that's good that's good news <clears throat> yeah good news um i walked by bun ratty which everyone in town is always asking what's going on with bun ratty are they not yeah, coming i get asked every, every all the day. time so they're coming 
uh, but they're moving slowly. There wasn't any, when I walked by at 1 o'clock this afternoon, I didn't see any sign of any contractors there or anything going on. They're hiring, so. They're hiring. Take that yeah. for what it's worth, I guess. Yep. So it's coming, but I think it's coming slowly. Um, we, I don't know if this board is aware that there was a hearing at the Board of Selectmen a couple weeks ago for removal of one of the trees in the island in front of um, Town Pizza. Mm -hmm. There's a planted island there. And the trees have gotten a lot of complaints from the businesses that the trees block the businesses. And so the solution that was arrived at was to remove the middle tree and create more of a seating area in this planted space with a path through the middle and put a water source in. So I've been involved in a few meetings on that. A water and source? Maintain the water feature. Water it's just water it's fountain? just a, a spigot. Oh, okay. To water the right. plantings. Oh, okay. Just for fun, this was something that you mentioned, Bunratties. This was like next door. So the the, uh, the, the on wonderful Monday, thing about <laughs> trees is week. that once they get <laughs> older and bigger, like the ones we had before the work was done on Main Street, all the canopies were up above the yeah. that so that no was, was there a discussion about trimming right. the trees up oh. higher for a while yeah the tree warden basically said that these oh, trees the wrong kind of tree that was planted there can we plant something else instead that has more of like a what's it the english uh the what's the tree i'm thinking of the um that has that sort of filtered light. The Little Leaf Linden? No. English. Um, they're all speckled. It has very few leaves. Gives sort of a filtered light. Um, a plane tree. An English plane tree. Yeah, so these trees, unfortunately, grow somewhat horizontal at the crown, which is a problem. If they had selected a different type of tree it would have been more vertical and would have been more see-through so that's part mm. of the problem and they've grown so well in the nice soil and you know so the consensus was if you get rid of the middle tree that would create enough of an opening and keep, still keep the two trees on the end to preserve the greenery and then add back in some additional greenery into this planted area and okay. Um, so mm -hmm. that was, they had a <clears throat> hearing at the Board of Selectmen meeting two, three weeks ago, and it was approved to, for the tree to be removed. Mm. So That's I'm not too bad. I mean, the, sure. And did the business pay for it? No. It's DPW. I don't want to pay for it. We already paid for it. We pay, paid to put it in. Why, why are we paying to take it out? Yeah, well, I mean, there's, and there's a, if you talk to anybody who does uh, tree maintenance, tree pruning, there's a, there's a pruning style called raising the canopy, which is you basically, you take off the, lo the lower branches uh, and let the, let the upper branches go. And you basically, you literally raise the canopy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had to do it with the trees in front of my house a couple of times. I think DPW did that in front of um, Diamichis because they had called, um, and I don't know if Orange Leaf, but definitely in front of Diamichis, there's a couple of trees there where they did, they thinned it out, and that seemed to help. Yeah. But, but I was, I showed Jeff, I mean, the, um, I was down right there where Bunratty's is going to be. Uh, I think it was Friday night, Friday evening, and the, the store next door to them, Sally's or whatever it is, was absolutely dark. 
and the open sign was on the window. But the E was not yeah. illuminated. <laughs> <laughs> it looked pretty. The bakery? Nail place. The nail oh, place. Yeah, the nail yeah. place. The nail okay. place, yeah. They had the neon open sign, and the E was Missing. burned out. Okay. But it was <laughs> turned on and illuminating this Kathy's. absolutely dark storefront. <laughs> So their their timer, if any, is not working. Yeah, the e. Well, I think Gene, isn't the space supposed to be sort of redesigned to where there's more seating? To yes. To kind of engage that area a little bit mm -hmm. more. Yep. I haven't, I haven't seen the plan. I don't know that there's a concrete plan yet, but it's a, it's mm -hmm. being developed. So. There's nothing saying that the, because that all, all that project was a mass highway designed, right? VHB and mass highway designed project. Main Street, all the brick plantings, mm -hmm. all our, our well, awesome monuments, granite monuments to Stonehenge and all that. Um, there's nothing saying that the landscape architect picked the right kind of trees. In fact, apparently they did not. Um, and so I, you know, should we start thinking, right, the trees are a long-term thing, if they are continually going to grow this way instead of this way, and it's going to continually be an issue, is there a way to start to redo, because we want trees downtown, we force other people to put trees in, but then, you know, take trees out that we already paid for. Mm -hmm. it, um, it, sh should we be thinking about a way to uh, selectively start to replace those trees with trees of the more appropriate uh, species, because apparently those are not. Um, right, I mean, that's that's the gist of what I just heard you say, is they're, they're the nice but the wrong thing in the, yep. in the right place. Yeah, I mean, we can definitely, you know. Because it's going to go on. For, it's, if they always grow this way, it's always going to be an issue. And I don't know if those street trees that are in are all of that type, you know, but um, I can definitely follow up with the tree warden, mm -hmm. who we work pretty closely with, and get a better sense of, you know, what the overall gist is and how we might be able to maybe be a little proactive on this one. Because it's, right, it's like a 10-year ten 10-year ten process there of, like, t getting a little one going, mm -hmm. big enough size, so you can take the old one out. Yep. I mean, if it was managed correctly. Um, so that's the only other um, update I wanted to get some input on uh, was a Friday morning I well we had a pre-construction pre meeting with um, the project at 200 Ash Street Dr. Ravens that was the house that was demolished and all the money fell out um, they bought the house next door and when oh, they went yeah. to demolish all the money went flying um, <laughs> so he's now getting ready to do his addition which the board approved and um, at the pre-construction meeting, we um, talked about a couple of things that the current plan um, maybe needs to be revised on, or they would like to see if they can make some revisions. So um, one of the things, this is. It's sustainable. Yeah, one of the things that they wanted to see if they could do is <coughs> yeah, and pull up the right plan. Um, yeah, there we go. Thank you. Is um, a couple of things to do with the dumpster, the snow removal. In the landscaping that's basically what it boils down to um, and this was a while ago so just 
to refresh your memory. Um, so this is the new parking area they're developing and the addition. It's a <coughs> fairly small addition um, with a landscaped area here and here and then a walkway or a driveway. Yeah, it's a walkway. Walkway. Um, so you might remember that there was some discussion about putting in a planted area in place of the existing asphalt and saw cutting that asphalt. I don't know if there's a landscaping plan. Um, so what they would like to do is to revisit that and if the board would c reconsider the need for doing that, particularly in light of the um, additional plantings that are happening in front of the addition and then to the side. Um, and what they were proposing is instead of doing the saw cutting of the asphalt, possibly putting in some planters, seasonal planters. The concern was that this handicap ramp, there'd be about five feet between the end of the ramp and the planter. And I have a couple of plans that they just kind of marked up um, that I can pass around. But if they eliminated that planting area um, and replaced it with the planters, I think the feeling was that would provide a little better access to the handicap ramp. So that was the first thing they were asking for uh, consideration on. The whole thing here is that not that it, the whole thing is that between the sidewalk, the curb here, and the front of the building is I, I don't even know how to measure this, but is 20 feet of paved area. Right here's the concrete sidewalk and then this is all paved mm -hmm. within the right of way and then they're going to maintain this little thing here and they're going to that's really the the issue I thought where we ended up was them taking saw cutting this out and using this as the mm -hmm. as the the access route into their facility or either either or but the, the that's the the issue there is that this is all pavement it, and it, it just looks between no. the sidewalk and no if you look at the pictures this is their property line yeah mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, but the, I mean the on the, the whole uh, northerly proper or parking area. I mean, there's no tree lawn or curb or over here. Yeah, I, I mean on this the, is at all the, planted at the, at the street edge. I meant. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is just pavement. All this is pavement. Mm -hmm. All this is pavement, and that's the that's where we had the discussion yep. about. You know, can we have them do something outside of their property in the in the road right of way? And that happens all the time. Right. I mean, look at remember that whole discussion about PNS. It was before you were here. Yeah. But half of their parking lot is in highway is in the the road right of way. They yeah. recommended to John that he take this curb cut and pull it back this way because then he could he could actually loop that. Like yes. This and he could get a tree in that. Yeah. Spot. You know. Area. You bring this over, you can build your island. Right. You put a tree there. You can cut it out. So, how'd you leave it with them? I said, I don't really feel comfortable, you know, as a staff thing. I said, I remember the board had a lot of discussion about this. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, we, we want some of that asphalt to go away. You know, maybe it doesn't have to happen immediately. But, uh, you know, it's... So 
They're using this to back help, that's why, right? Yeah. 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 But they're not using any of this. Maybe we could have them make that green. Where I thought we ended up was they were going to do this sidewalk, right? This is four feet um, sidewalk, and do extend that out here, and then cut this out and create a a, a um, tree lawn. A tree lawn. Keep this the existing sidewalk, and then just create a, a tree lawn there in front. So you have sidewalk, tree lawn, and then there. Um, <coughs> their sidewalk. That's where I thought we ended up. <clears throat> and not doing, they, they were pretty focused on keeping that um, paved because of access from here. No, and no so, that, the, yeah, if you, if you create, if you, if you take, Me? if you create a tree lawn in here, May 29th. who cares if that's, that's fine. If they want to pave up the building, we can do that. <coughs> so I think they're, it, um, Signed it June 3rd. the interpretation of the, of the recommended changes did not, didn't carry through. Because they're asking to eliminate something that we, Said, yeah, sure, eliminate, but so replace with something else. We gave them everything else. Yeah. They're not doing anything else that's sort of beneficial to the streetscape. Everything else that they're doing is strictly functional. Yeah. Strictly for what they need. And they're just paving over everything. So, I, I, I'm just looking at my own minutes. I think there was a discussion about the public, the right of way. Yeah. And that, um, Mr. Dr. Raven suggested putting the landscaping along the ramp because he's concerned about the plowing and um, the walkway and the public right of way. So I, I think that at that point, um, there was that, that thought that he should not go over the, the property line because there was concern over that. I think he says that they plow right through there. Well, and the decision <laughs> said they're going to come up with a landscaping plan for the town planner to review and approve. Identifying along the western edge of the site near the handicap ramp, a landscaped area. Well, the, the landscaped area. Right. We did talk about we originally talked about landscaping, swinging this out here more and creating a whole this. Right. Uh, and he said, no, I don't like that because of the plowing. And the so plowing. we said, okay, then flip it. Keep your, keep, your, keep your sidewalk there, but create a tree lawn in here. Somewhere in here, it is, <laughs> there's got to be. And that that's that was what the discussion was mm -hmm. he didn't he didn't he wanted to keep his the the um, we originally said swing this out here he said no paving uh, snow plowing and all that he said okay and keep it there but then just do when well you're not going to drive the snow plow up onto the sidewalk I mean I hope <laughs> Unless he's got a small bobcat or something. He may. But, you know, look at this. He wants to eliminate less than a parking spot size worth of planting. Well, I think what he was saying is could we do give the same effect with planters? Mm -hmm. I'll take the planters out in the winter so he can plow. But that's not, that's, that's not the, the plan that we ended up, the, the resolution that yeah. we ended up talking about. 
Yeah. That was the plan that they originally proposed that said, can we change it? And we said, yeah, we, you can change that because who cares about that little, that little thing? Right. We want you can redo that. Yeah. So it's giving up something that we already talked through. Yeah. Okay, and then the um, the second issue that they raised was about the dumpster, um, and they may need to expand the dumpster enclosure because I guess state law says you're supposed to have two dumpsters, one for trash and one for recycle, and they have two dumpsters down there. I went went to the site Friday morning to look at it, so two dumpsters are not going to fit in the dumpster enclosure that they have designed. Now it's possible that they may be able to work with the hauler and get either totes or you know some other, they don't generate a lot of trash. They have probably more cardboard than anything. Um, so they're trying to figure out if there is a way that they can make it work. But if they can't make it work and they need two dumpsters like they have now, they need to do something else with the um, dumpster enclosure and probably expand it. And they also talked about maybe um, adjusting it so that it was more kitty corner than, than straight in um, for ease of removing the dumpster. So that was another thing I said. That I think that really needs to come back to the board. I can't see a problem with that, although I thought they were really skating the edge in terms of, um, wasn't there some issues here about the water table and the amount of drainage they could come off this driveway and mm. in there? I thought that all played into the sizing of this. The storm water? Yeah. We can double check with sure. George. Well, I can't see that being a big deal if they have to no. expand that or and if they want to turn it that way. It might actually be better turned because then they could fit a little, you know, two little arborvitae in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Kind of yep. Yep. a kitty corner so like that. Mm -hmm. The truck can just back up like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> as long as the both dumpsters are enclosed and so on and so forth. I mean, the, you know, the double size enclosure with the, with the doors open all the time is not what we want. Yep. And then they want to do something different with snow storage? Yeah, the snow, snow removal, um, they basically, um, when they were working with conservation on the rain garden, the um, conservation administrator had some concerns about the snow removal, snow storage, encroaching into the rain garden. So um, they were thinking that they might um, expand the snow storage. And you can see on the drawing, it it widens out a bit, and then if they could lower the curbing so that they can, the plow driver could push the snow into that expanded snow storage area. Right now there's a curb that goes around it. <laughs> so it's, the snow storage is like this, they would be widening it and then possibly either lowering the curb or making it flush to be able to get in there and, and push the snow in. How was it originally? <clears throat> well, the, the curb, original the is... <laughs> Curb is part of the drainage. Yeah. So, and that's, I mean, that's part of why it's there. So, I mean, dropping the curb, dropping it flush is just is wrong. They'd have to do a, like a, what, a Cape Cod berm. Which is exactly what you don't want to do with a, pl Plow. a plow coming in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice, you know, VGC in there that you can stop yeah. on and, and yeah. scrape up over if you must. 
and then they were. Yeah, so this would yeah. expand like this. It's, there's tons of room back there. I mean, of all the, it, it's deceiving, of all the snow storage, you know, this site offers a lot more than a lot of others do. Mm. So I think they can make that work. If they have to keep the curb, you know, they have to keep the curb. Um, and then they talked about how there's these arborvitaes in the back of the dumpster. This um, fence area is got um, all arborvitaes on the RMLD side. So there's a lot of, you know, trees there. And they were thinking, you know, this doesn't really add a whole lot. Um, so these three mm -hmm. could be moved over here and marking the edge between the snow storage and kind of being a uh, natural fence to protect this rain garden area. Yeah, this we talked about that, and I said the same thing. I don't understand why. If you if you have a row of trees here, why do you feel the need to put more on this? boundary but put them in the tree lawn where we want them <laughs> <laughs> what size would they be you would want them somewhat substantial if you wanted to create that barrier immediately right yeah I think we asked them to make sure the trees were well the maples were going to be four inches I don't know about the yeah, arborvitae the, the ones out here yeah out the front so that's that's what they said. So I'm going to say no on the uh, on the planter, but otherwise, are there any other concerns on the other areas? I mean, obviously, with the curbing, is a no. Well, I I guess I don't I don't say no on the planter. The issue here is that their design isn't what we ended up talking to, and wasn't what they were supposed to submit to you for a landscape plan. Right. Their landscape plan was supposed to have some tree lawn in this section in front of their building right it's, it's what it was supposed to include not not this little area so if they can accommodate that and and they put they keep that paved mm -hmm. yeah is that what the minutes from that meeting indicate Um, I have that, Mr. Weston. He would like to see some of the pavement reviewed, removed in between the walkway area and where the excess pavement is. He would suggest on the seating and while planting. Dr. Raven suggested putting the landscaping right along the ramp, leaving the walkway adjacent to the sidewalk because he's concerned about plowing. Mr. Sullivan said the concern with that is his walkway could be within the public right away. That's where we're left. Okay. Yeah. They do need to maintain some walkway for access, but it does seem that some of the payment could be eliminated. It's about 15 feet between the curb and the front of the um, the the edge of the handicap ramp, all paved. Mm -hmm. Nice place to go park. Yeah, I guess I don't understand why he's so reluctant to bring his walkway out to the sidewalk and have people walk on the sidewalk to get back across. You know, and down to the table of downtown, you're not you're in the public right of way yeah. and you're walking across the front of the building. Yeah, he's building a walkway next to a walkway. It's his walkway. Right. Yeah, not the public walkway, but what's the difference? Right. What's happening is that the ramp exists or it would have been flipped, it would have been designed to face the other way. Right. 
and they don't want to change it, and that's understandable. That's why they're constructed. But we're sort of compounding a design that isn't the way it should be. You can bring up the street view if you want. They should make at least an attempt to do what John is suggesting. I don't think it's a cost issue. I think it's the same. There's nothing significant about what they were asked to do. Right. Yeah, I don't think it's. it's some of the stuff they're looking at back here is, yeah. is yeah. you know, triple the price of what we're talking about here. I mean, it's saw cutting out pavement, putting some loam and seed down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if they really want to make it nice, put it, put in a little tree or two. No, no. <laughs> 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 Plain tree, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then your little guy's right above that. Yeah. Right <coughs> about. That's not it. Right there. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they really updated that. Wow, I guess they did. Oh. Oh, it's a little bit. That's what you're talking about yeah. right there. Yep. Yeah. And you could come. Yeah, I mean, like this even down you, the sidewalk. I mean, it, 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 Nick has an uh, even better point. Why not bring the side there, bring their walkway out into the sidewalk and have it come back up to the ramp? And we weren't even asking that. Right. We were asking take us, don't have that's basically three, three sidewalks stacked yeah. uh, against each other. Take one of those widths, that four foot width, and make it. Tree you were saying in here. I, I, I don't care. Yeah. It Somewhere. Does, it doesn't matter, <laughs> right? Because you could have, you could have, it comes in right now, right there, design comes in right around here. Yeah. Right? And so, like what Nick was saying, it might make sense for them to bring it into the sidewalk. People could walk along here, and then you could have this whole area, make this whole area like they want. All, but then at least this whole area right in here would be all planted. But that's not what we had talked about. We had talked about just saw cutting out either this part or this part. Pick one. Yeah. Pick one. Yep. And creating a, a either a tree lawn or a landscaped area. Yeah, and if they're going to keep their own walkway, then I guess I would prefer that the tree lawn be between the sidewalk public sidewalk and, and their walk yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah this right here yeah, exactly. becomes, be, becomes um yeah right but that was the point where he said he was concerned about the plowing the no plowing he was concerned the other way around well i when, think if we take away his formal walkway on his property then his walk then folks would be having to walk yeah. Outside on the public right away. We're not saying that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he can have have his walkway mm -hmm. either stay where it is and saw cut out some of that, create a lawn, mm -hmm. or he could have it come out here and like that and then plant in there. Plant in there. Yeah. Plant around the walkway. Yeah. Not have sidewalk eight feet of pavement and then his ramp because he was um he is going to landscape in here right this little spot right in here and then over here by the addition but it's just crazy to <laughs> want to have i mean that if you turn the other direction can you yeah just slightly like from that angle, yeah. You keep a little bit more. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. 
how I, I don't <coughs> downtown Hornets. Yeah. I mean, just paved. Yeah. What's that? Extra yeah. spot. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. So that was the discussion we had. Okay. I think I even gave my little sketch to I think Jack. you did. I remember there was a lot of discussion. So you got what you need? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm good. <coughs> Any other updates? I think that's it. Any word on Family Dental in there? No. Nothing new on Walgreens either. I mean, I haven't heard anything. Um, the library's getting ready to close and move. Yep. Right? The yep. end of this week, right? Mm, yeah. This week, 11? next week? Yeah. No, it's the 11th. Is that hmm. Saturday? Yeah, the Thursday before Columbus Day. Yep. And then they'll be closed for three weeks? I think it's three weeks. Yeah, I think that's right. Yep. Yep. You want to knock out the meeting minutes? Sure. What's that? We we're going to come back to the zoning or? Chairman, whatever you decide. You know, mm. it's an excellent okay. point. My apologies. That's fine. Whatever you make the board work more efficient. Adjourn it. I know, let's go back to the minutes. It's a, it's a good point, Nick. Thanks. So, um, last Monday at town meeting, we had um, the art uh, Article 9 through 13. Article 9, which was the purpose, did not pass. So that will be deferred. Um, all the others did pass, so we're all set with our medical marijuana, which is great. Um, and so I put together an outline for um, the presentation for November town meeting, which I think is going to be, town meeting starts November 10th, and um, I think the rough game plan is to take all the non-zoning articles first and then start on the 13th, the Thursday. Um, so there was a memo that went out today from the town manager describing a revised approach. Um, you might remember we've talked a lot about um, do we do the full comprehensive update of the bylaw? And then John's point, which I thought was an excellent point, was, well, maybe have a backup plan for recodification in case the big zoning comprehensive update, for whatever reason, doesn't fly. Um, this is a little bit of a hybrid of that. But uh, what we're talking about doing in November is um, coming back with um, section two, the definitions, and then um, section, the, I'm going by the, now the new sections, section four, administration, which is the permits, the enforcement, the special permit granting authority, the zoning board of appeals, CPDC, and site plan review. Um, section 5, which are the use regulations, use tables, uh, applicability of use regulations. Uh, you might recall we now have two use tables, one for residential, one for commercial industrial. Um, supplementary use requirements, accessory uses, accessory apartments, accessory buildings and structures, and uses by special permit. Uh, medical marijuana will go in 
will be inserted into those uses by special permit. Um, then six intensity regulations, and then seven non-conforming uses and structures, and basically stop there. And the remaining eight, nine, ten, and eleven would go would be taken up at annual town meeting. And uh, in addition, we would take up section twelve in November application and severability. So um, signs <laughs> that would be taken up in the spring at the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, so signs are the new section eight is signs. The new section nine is off street parking and loading. And the new section 10 is overlay districts. And the new section 11 is plan development, the PUD and the PRD. So um, that would give us four zoning articles at annual town meeting, but otherwise, um, all of the old language would move as a recodification in the places where we don't have new language, the old language would be inserted. So we would have a recodified zoning bylaw with a good portion of it, um, all but four sections, um, inserted with new language. And that would be what we are going to tackle in November. We actually have a draft of it. Mm -hmm. Whoa. True story. <laughs> a lot of weekend hours on that one. I was yeah. going to say, I heard you had to <laughs> put in some extra time. So um, that should be up on the website. If not, can I see it? Yes, it's good. I just want to see the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does have some. 4,000 plus hours to get to this point. We know. <laughs> <laughs> so, two, four, five, six, seven, That's 12. What have been asking for? All individual articles? Nope, one article, up or down. It'll be fun to find out. I know. As they used to say. <clears throat> you kind of have to because as we start making those changes, it all kind of hangs together. Yeah. Right. So. I warned you. <laughs> yeah. And then in the spring, those possibly could go as separate articles. Which we've done in the past. Parking is its own article. Sign is its own article. Um, we also had that other small minor map change for the PRD. So right. at some point, that's I think Article Seven. I think it is. So, so what do we need to accomplish tonight? Uh, well, I just, like I said, I, I didn't even start the presentation. We just decided this approach like Thursday afternoon. So um, I, my intention was to come with an outline just to make the board aware of kind of how, how this mammoth amount of information still, even with the four sections deferred. It's a lot of information to get across to town meeting. And um, so I think up front, the sort of the, um, the background piece of this and why this is important was something that I thought would be a good opportunity to put a little more emphasis on it in November. We didn't, we didn't really emphasize that last Monday and we might have benefited it if we had taken a little more time with that. Um, so we have a kind of an interesting video that uh, a colleague sent us on what is zoning. Um, 
something like that was an idea. Um, maybe some testimonials from some of the folks who've been through the process. You might remember back in the smart growth zoning, we had a couple of property owners, a, a developer, come and describe why they were in support of the smart growth zoning. So if we could get some real live people. I know we've had a lot of um, good comments from a lot of people that have gone through the process. I was thinking about um, the dirty doodle at a couple of our public forums. He spoke up and said, you know, all I wanted to do was put a dog grooming facility in a, an existing commercial building on South Main Street. I didn't know that it was going to be this involved. And because we didn't have it in our use table and we didn't have it in our definitions, um, he had ended up going through the Zoning Board of Appeals to open up a dog grooming business. So that's kind of a classic, um, you know, when your zoning hasn't been updated, what the outcome is. So um, by having a more robust ta uh, use table, two use tables, um, by having a more uh, extensive amount of definitions as the foundation, and what kind of the what this translates into for people that have to go through the process. Mm -hmm. So we've got the fifteenth is Wednesday. Uh, what's the, do we know the, this is the informational meeting? Yes. And that's what, at the senior center or we mm -hmm. haven't, have we nailed it down yet? Senior center, 730. Okay. And the Zach is also meeting on the 14th. We had to post it a little bit early, but for those that can make it, we'll be talking about the details of the 15th. Okay. So I think we're going to post that, what, at 5? Yeah. On That's on a Tuesday. Yeah. And we've um, helped to draft a letter that the Zoning Advisory Committee Chair is going to be sending out along with a detailed chart of changes. So um, that's scheduled to go out this week. Again, making town meeting members aware of the um, Zoning Advisory Committee meeting on the October 15th, the public, we're calling it a public forum, um, the CPDC public hearing on the 20th, and availability of staff if there are any questions. Jesse and I are creating sort of office hours on Tuesday nights so that one of us is there at the counter if anyone wants to come in between 5 and 7, questions, comments, that type of thing. So there's three ways that um, folks can kind of make comment, ask questions, and that will um, hopefully get some dialogue going before it comes to the floor of town meeting. For the public hearing, are you going to treat it like you did for September, where you kind of where you built a presentation that was used for both? That's my goal. Um, usually. Usually things change. I mean, I would expect there's going to be some things that happen at the public hearing that will give us a little more insight and um, lead us to make a few tweaks to the presentation for town meeting. Um, but it's it's so much information. Um, you know, it's I, I, I would say <laughs> easily it could be, you know, 100 slides. Um, because one of the things that we have heard, and the good thing about September town meeting is we got to do a little test run, and some of the feedback that we got was, gee, we're used to seeing more detailed presentations, which is true. We normally do go into quite a detailed presentation, um, but because the zoning was, you know, lined up side by side, and, I mean, section one was a page long, so... We didn't see, really see the need, um, but I think the expectation is for a detailed presentation. Did, do we want to possibly look at the calendar? Should we need to continue? We, yeah, we should. I think we talked about that at one point, the possibility of if we need that Thursday, I think it's the 23rd. Yeah. Um, if we need to go beyond, and our goal is to queue up 
the public hearing date of October 20th for just the public hearing. Mm -hmm. But should we need to extend, and sometimes we do, to another meeting, we'd like to s possibly do it on the 23rd, which is the following Thursday. I think we did that, something similar to that with the uh, billboard. <coughs> mm, yeah, I don't remember that uh, per se, but. I mean, we can always continue it to the following Monday as well. Yeah. If we needed to, but just because of the length of the presentation, depending on how much, you know, attendance we get, we want to keep that in mind. I think. I think we already spoke about continuing it to the 23rd. I think we did. I mean, I have it on my calendar mm -hmm. at home, so okay. let's stick with that. Okay. Do you have to do anything different with your advertisements mm -hmm. or anything like that? No, you have to post it, right? I mean, that's all. Just post the meeting. Okay. <coughs> and be ready to cancel if we get lucky. <laughs> Jesse and I are going to a housing conference, and we've been invited to speak on the 24th. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Southern New England APA. Of course. Long Province. Barry Bluestone will be there. I heard him on NPR the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, this guy. <laughs> you, yeah, you were there at the meeting. I was, yeah, yeah, and I, I recognized his voice and yeah the way he speaks and then yeah. they mentioned north yeah, you know he mentioned northeastern so I'm like that's him. Is there anything this board can do to help you out? Um I think as we kind of get closer I, I know um you know it's as I say it's that right amount of detail without losing people yep so you know any feedback on as we build it how that works hmm. we're, we're hoping Jean and I for the for September town meeting had prepared what we call cheat sheets and they were very detailed for our purposes yeah. of anticipating questions you know it was built on an Excel spreadsheet and we're going to try and do that for this update and make it available to folks as part of the warrant report, which we're hoping will be, you know, kind of more of the side by side, but it'll be a side by side and, and what changed and section numbers and how it, it's more detailed essentially on exactly what the changes would be. And that's in addition to the matrix that you're sending MRC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be kind of a more out. detailed, okay. yeah. very drilled down level of that. Yep. And then are we thinking as far as the presentation goes, you would you go through one, two, three, four, five, and then review section two and then allow questions, and then review section four, allow questions, or are you going to go through the whole presentation and then open it up? For town meeting? Yeah. Yeah, there's so much information. I think it's a lot to ask people to hold their questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really. And that's what your colleague from Tuxbury was saying, right? You kind of handle it section by section. Yeah. Who has questions? Who has comments? Yeah, I think that's. I think that's what my thinking was. Yeah, and, and there's. I mean, where where there are, basically a, a, a rewrite of things. I'm not sure that the side by side. Uh, is a helpful presentation. I mean, you have to have the the what changed, but having the, the side by side is, you know, if, if it's you know 60% changed, then that's just a distraction. So I think yeah, I think in the warrant we'll give a clean version of the bylaw, mm -hmm. st standard format, and then those cheat sheets. Right. And it's going to be a lot of information, so they can take it or leave it, but at least they'll have a clean version. Of yeah. the bylaw. So. I agree. Sounds good. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of Red Bulls. <clears throat> well, it's it's real work, as you know. <laughs> yeah.
Good. All right. Anything else on preparation for November? Tony, anything? From, please. Um, my first question is, how is it going to work for the sections that you're not changing exactly? I thought I saw a request tonight. Um, the notice was in the paper that you were eliminating, say, Section 6 entirely and replacing it with the new Section 6. But if you're not adding Sections 8 and 9, your signage is gone entirely. We're using the old but old language. So we're re, re, re modifying it, reorganizing it. So there's an old and a new. Mm -hmm. But you said you were going to pull up. So my problem is that if you left the signage alone, everybody could say, okay, you're just renumbering it, moving it from 6.2 to 8.2. Mm -hmm. All right? And that would be a given. The problem is if you're going to get into those details of, well, we're changing this word here, we're changing that here, and it's not going to be. No, we're not changing anything. No, we're not anything. changing. Okay, so it's no Just changes, renumbering. Right, so just the numbers. Yep. Correct. And the only other recommendation I can make is you really want to get ahead of any significant changes before they're brought up on the floor. Uh, I think what happened on Monday night was that once people latched on to, wait a minute, wait a minute, you, you didn't say anything about this. Why are we adding this now? It starts to be getting into a paranoid, very defensive mode. And that's when I think you would start losing people. So if you were to, if you'd got up and said, this section that we've got it for uh, expanding the tax base and this section where we're saying more housing, we have to include those because we're required to have a housing plan, we're required to do this, we're required to do that. I think a lot of people would have felt more comfortable that, yes, we know it's changed and this is the reason for it, as opposed to, wait a minute, what are you trying to supply me? That's hopefully what our cheat sheet, cheat sheet. will detail, yeah. you know, exactly what it is. But I think you have to, where you go into detail, you have to go into detail. By the way, we want to flag this. This is a significant change, and this is the reason we're making it. You gave the cheat sheet, but yeah. Maybe a there. column where it's like a like a, a, a little symbol that says key change. I'd almost say that as you're doing each section, you want to highlight these are significant changes. Section 5.4.4 used to say this. You change it to this, and this is why. I'm not talking about just mm. the little wording ones. There are a lot of in section three where you just change the words a little bit. But there's times when there's going to be significant changes and you really want to be upfront with people about those. See that's where we when we even when we discussed it here, we didn't think they were significant changes because like the over prevent overcrowding seemed like we're now talking about smart growth. So even though you know, it's sort of two ways of saying the same thing. But you are people who are very much into the zoning, into the the little nuances of how the wording is. So the rest of town meeting, no. If you say we're expanding the tax base, all they just heard was we want more business in here, we want more housing, we want more of everything. They're just going to read it straightforward, word for word, what it says. They don't understand the, um, I'll say, planning implications yeah. behind it. Any specific topics you mm -hmm. think that come to your mind that we need to get ahead of? I will be reviewing all of it and I'll, I will send an email off to Jean and Jesse Please. if I find anything that I think. I figure if it raises a flag for me, it probably raises a flag for somebody else in town. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you don't, I just checked. I'm not seeing it on our project website, but we do have copies available if you want a copy. Yes, I'd like them. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can come and take a look at it and get you a copy. Okay. <coughs> or I can email it to you. You can email I'll email it to you. Okay. Less paper. Appreciate that feedback. Yeah, it's Thank helpful. You. Thanks. You're You've been along with us for the whole ride. <laughs> or a good portion of it. All right, so I think that wraps up that portion. You want to knock out minute, minutes quickly and then, or Jesse? I was, just look, I was just looking at not emergency vehicles. So. Yeah, I was just Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Come from Bob, yeah. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just when I left work, I work out an accident in Magog Park, and one of the truly annoying things is these three or four speed bumps. You know, the little short fat or the tall oh, ones yeah. that you you can't drive over to save your life. And coming the other way was an ambulance and two fire trucks oh, having to slow down to a crawl to get over the speed bumps. <laughs> Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the, if you can't drive over them at the posted speed limit, thank you. The next time, they should be gone. They should not be there yet. So I, I had I reviewed these earlier. A um, couple of comments. Page three under public hearing for zoning change, Article 11. This would be the second paragraph. It starts with Mr. Safina asked if. The second sentence there seems like it kind of contradicts itself. Ms. Delio said no, but that it really was not followed since it was superseded. It almost seems like I should say Ms. Delio said yes, but that it was not really followed. Well, there, yeah, I think it was, no, there's not an additional layer of permitting. And that, I almost want to put a period there and say, Regardless, they weren't really, it wasn't really followed anyway. That's really, I think, right, Jean? Yeah. I had to read that a couple of times myself, but yeah, I think that's where we ended so up. Okay. I'll um, make two sentences out of that so it's clear. Yep. And then page four. In the middle, Miss Brewer suggested eliminating. The start of the second sentence. She also suggested including regulations that stipulate the procedures. Okay. And then at the bottom of page four, it references under planning updates and other business. It re it references September town meeting. I think you meant November town meeting. Um, which page? Page four, the bottom of under planning updates and other business. Yes, on the November town meeting. That's really it. No, but they told us they were going to. Said they will be. And said. said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. That might be important someday. <laughs> <laughs> That the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of uh, November 5th, I'm sorry, September 15th, 2014, as amended. Um, can I just jump in with one scheduling point? Um, sure. We have on the calendar a meeting at the end of November, I think it's 29th. Um, and likewise, there's one like Christmas Eve, Eve, um, of oh, the 24th of November is technically on the calendar and then the 22nd of December. So I was going to suggest that maybe we don't need those meetings. I would agree. I mean, I mean, what's your crystal ball telling you as far as what kind of stuff's coming in? I have nothing after October, even tentative. Wow, yeah. But, I mean, there are, we, we hear things, but. Yeah, but it's. Yeah. I think that time of year, it's typically, you know, we've, we've always only had one meeting in December. Yeah. And the Monday after Thanksgiving. I'm, no, I'm the Monday before Thanksgiving. Yeah. 
I'm in favor so we meet of on the third. fewer meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, November. after this year, I think. The yeah. third. So there's one meeting in November and one meeting in December. Perfect. November 3rd plus and town, December. Yeah, plus town meeting, yeah. December 8th, yeah. yeah. Did you say earlier that town meeting could go three nights? Right now it's four scheduled nights. for four nights. November 10th, November 13th, November 17th, and November 20th. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, yeah. no, I, I if we're it. lucky, it won't, but. I get it. So, yeah, it's Candle's meeting. Yeah. It could go all four. And if something comes up, which I mean, could, but nothing I don't think we can handle. Yep. It's a later meeting. Right. And we can tell people, you know, like if Dr. Ravens wants to come back, they can come back in January. There's nothing on there that's right. time sensitive. They're not going to be planting anything Wouldn't in November, condition their December. Their permit. <laughs> um, is that is it lighter than past years that you remember? Yes. At this time of year. Yeah. I think. I mean, it, it usually gets kind of light, but. Um, I, I think that if we, I mean, there's always been something. There's always been, been something, yeah. sort of looming. We've had bigger projects at the end of the year, and there isn't that yeah. wave of one or two bigger projects. Which have been lucky because we've of this a lot of zoning. Large municipal infrastructure projects that will be happening that don't require our permit. Yep. Sure. Yeah. I mean, at some point, I think something from St. Agnes will come through. I think Al said yeah. he's got something. I don't know what, but it sounds like he's going to come back with something at some point. Um, There's a developer seriously looking at the post office. Mm -hmm. It would be great. Any rumblings about that certainly would? I keep hearing all kinds of things about that. Been getting calls, you know. Yeah. What's the zoning? What can go there? What can't go there? Well, we we will expedite it if they follow the full yard. If they follow the smart growth rules, we'll expedite it somehow because that's such a vulnerable piece of land right now. Yeah, something really bad could happen there. Yeah, you need town meeting yeah. approval. I know, yeah. and it's all as far as I'm concerned on the board of selectmen's back because they didn't want to include that piece. Yeah. We had our meeting about the um, economic development plan a couple of weeks ago, and um, that's one of the things that they're looking at as part of the, you know, I mean, PC is helping us with this economic development action plan, and they're looking at expanding the 40 yard district and, um, you know, the potential for what we could have for additional housing units and more commercial, and I mean, it just seems like a natural, but I made the point. It was part of the district, and the Board of Selectmen voted to remove it. But let's take that in context, too, because now might be the time to go revisit that, because it wasn't the, the discussion, as I remember it, wasn't we don't want that to happen. The discussion, as I remember it, was let's bite off a, as small as we can chew yep. and see how it goes. Yep. Right. And so we did that. We bit off as small an area as we possibly, as was allowed, right? And we saw how it went, and I, I think the results so far are in that, you know, the type of development is, is positive, um, probably more positive than other things that could, could happen, especially on that side. So maybe it might, it, you know, it might be time to revisit that decision. Well, yeah. it's interesting. I mean, because it, it, I'm sorry, it wasn't. I don't remember it as a no. We don't want to do that. I well, remember there was it a as a. From the neighbors in that area, because there was really a lack of understanding of what what is 40. What is this? They just thought of it as 40B. Right. And my point was always, well, 40B can go there, and 40B will go there if you don't protect it somehow. It was too big. Those pieces yeah. of land are just too big. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Well, there were there were there was pushback about. Um, 
allowing commercial development on the residential side of the train station and, and including that strip in the that 40R. Right, ex except for that commercial it? strip. <laughs> well, I, yeah. it, no, I know what you're saying. I, 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 well, that, I mean, that's where the pushback was. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, it, it was uh, fairly soon after in, the, in terms of the uh, collective memory. It was soon after the employee parking lot for Redding Cooperative Bank. Oh, yeah. Which was an ex so called expansion of the business street district. Uh, because that particular lot had been residential and it, it converted. It goes back to a, a, an issue we have with every, uh, uh, probably every single commercial property that's in town is that it abuts a residential mm -hmm. property. I, there's probably only only a handful that don't. Yep. Um, so right. there's continually that issue. Mm -hmm. The four yard will let us really control that edge, though. Yeah. We could, we could really separate the front of it, which is commercial, from the back of it, which would be nothing. You know, you could have everything happening from the front side. Yeah. On a small storefront, you know, front door deliveries and things. And you could protect that whole back end yeah. of it, actually block it out. So, Fort Air lets us do that where nothing else does. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you.